All right, Besiata Dishmaya, we are going in on the chapter of Bitochon in the book, Biyam Darkecha, my favorite book in the world that I can't put down. It's filled with so much good. We're on page Reish Pei Bet, not to be confused with the famous teaching of Rabbi Nachman, Reish Pei Bet, Azamra. This is page Reish Pei Bet, the, the chapter on Bitochon and Biyam Darkecha. El Yeshuati Eftach Velo Evchad. The God of my salvation, I shall trust in him, and I won't be scared. Mawapachad, what is fear? Fear is a very hard thing when it comes strongly, especially, and it can mush, it can paralyze a person. Right? We're in a time right now where a lot of people are experiencing fear. A lot of people are experiencing very hard things to the point that they're willing to leave their land, leave their country, and to go to some place in exile to feel safe, right? And, uh, and to leave their city, is, it's, a, it's a hard thing. Fear is a serious, serious thing that we have to understand it. And hopefully, Bizat Hashem, our goal today is to understand it properly to the point where we don't let these things overcome us. When a person f- hears these rumors and these news of things that are meant to happen to him, that are potentially going to happen to you, right? Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran, all these different things. You also see proof. To these, uh, to these supposed uh, rumors. The natural outcome of that is to go into fear, to be scared. Because according to your understanding, this in- imminent threat is true. It's proper. It's, 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 it's going to happen. According to everything that you see with your eyes, this is a real threat. Then he starts to think, what's going to be with me? Who knows what's going to be with me? And this fear comes from a thought that there is some kind of being or power or force or country or person or any other kind of thing that wants to, can, wants to and can hurt me. Right? An idea if you have uh, the rules of engagement when you're allowed to fire. And they are yecholet ve kavana. Meaning the, person, the, the, the threat can hurt you and he has intention to hurt you. Only then are you allowed to start to use your gun. So to here, person sees, well, Hezbollah are sitting on our border, they have the ability to hurt us, and they have the intention, so you get scared. That's uh, so defining what is fear. Fear is this, is this a person sees a, a threat, a supposed threat to them. Obviously we're talking physical threats here, but it could be anything. The bank could close all of my accounts and I won't have money to live. I could get fired from my job, right? This person could hurt me emotionally, physically, whatever it is. These are different fears that we have and the natural outcome is that you start to get scared to the point that you might even become paralyzed. You might even not be able to move and do anything in your life because of this emotion that you're feeling. So we have to understand what it is. The, the creations, the human beings, we don't have any power to ourselves alone. The answer to pachad is bitachon. The answer to, to fear is the trust in Hashem. And trust is an outcome of clear emuna. When a person knows that everything is in the hand of Hashem, and any action that's done in this world, even the smallest, smallest action possible, is only done by way of a decision and the power of Hashem, blessed be He Himself. And a person, the second he understands this clearly, then he doesn't have fear from anything in the world. Because you start to understand that no one has power. If everything is done only by way of the decision and the power of Hashem, and no one is separate from that power and that decision maker, then no one really has power. And then no damage could happen to a person. The only way anybody could affect you and harm you, face value, harm you, is because Hashem sent them. But Hashem does everything for the complete good. Hashem is merciful and He loves you and He's doing everything for the good. And so whatever it, it, whenever it appears as if someone was successful in doing something against you, As if he has power, it's not his success. It happened because that was the will of Hashem. It's not this person was successful in hurting you. This person 
lived out the will of Hashem that was decreed from up above. Elishuit Barach si vevet ze beofen shirei ki ilu anashim asu zot mikoach atzvam. Hashem created a world that it appears to us as if human beings have their own power, as if they have the ability to carry out some kind of attack against us, as if they have the ability to harm us, to cause us damage, to cause us anything. Why did Hashem make a world that it appears as if that guy is coming to hurt me? So that there would be a test and a trial for the Jew or for the human being in general to be mistaken and to think as if that person has his own power to hurt me. It's a test in Emuna. No one has their own power. Why does it appear like they have their own power? Why does it appear that two armies fight each other? When it's really all just the decision of Hashem? Just to see where we're holding with our Emuna, to see where we are in our mind. Every Jew knows clearly. There's nothing besides Hashem. Mm-hmm. None of the creations, no human being, no animal, no peacock, no lion, no anything. None of them can exist by themselves. Not even for one moment without vitality and life that is being brought down to the whole entire creations by way of Hashem. Everyone according to their level. And there's a difference here, there's different levels here. Because the tzaddikim, they receive this light in a straight way. And lavdil, to separate the, the reshaim, the wicked people, the shefa comes to them with a lot of garments, with a lot of cover-ups, with a lot of different uh, concealments. Until, like, you can barely even see the light at all. Right? So many cover-ups, so many cover-ups, so many cover-ups. Also, every Jew knows clearly. <coughs> there's no power, there's no person in the world that can do anything without Hashem deciding it, and therefore you shouldn't be afraid at all. There's a question here, what about free will? So a lot of times in this book of Yam Darkecha, we're touching on, we're, we're, we're learning on a very high level. The true, 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 true inner reality. And the true, true, true real, inner reality is Hashem runs the world and He makes every single decision. How that fits in with our free will, I don't know. We have to come back down off of this high lofty tree that we're learning in of Pnimiyut Torah and Pnimiyut of the world, the inner aspects of this world. The truth is, we all in our head know that Hashem runs the world and Hashem created the world and Hashem makes every decision. How that comes down and works with our free will, that's for deeper questions uh, in a different time. But right now we're learning the true, true reality of the most inner being possible. So, how can you not be afraid at all? The truth is, any power, any ability to do anything is only Hashem's. And any human being and any force in this world at the core of their reality, they're like puppets that are just, they have no movement themselves, they have no, mo- they have no life themselves, they're just puppets, they're just sitting there. If the hand is taken out, it's a piece of fabric on the ground, right? It's not them. But we think simply, who am I scared of? Who am I afraid of? From people that in one second they could be removed from this world? In one second they could... They could completely lose all vitality in one, in one second. That person could no longer exist, right? God forbid, there's many different ways that people leave this world in, in two seconds, right? God forbid, cardiac arrest, faint, hit their head. So who am I afraid of? I'm afraid of a, of a finite person. But Hashem still gives them life. That in the end... Right? A person could sanctify Hashem's name. It could come closer and closer. And when he sees that when the Jew gets to a point and he shows that Hashem is the only true master of the house, Hashem's the balabayit, Hashem's the decision maker. And in any idea that's connected to fear, so when they fall down, these people, and it's revealed that it's all just an illusion and that they had no power themselves, and everything was just in the hands of Hashem. So then you're going to laugh about them even more. You're going to laugh at them. 
that, you, that, they were ever, that they ever even appeared like they were something serious. And then that gives a huge kavod to Shemaim. That's like a, the biggest honor to Hashem. Someone said, yesterday I heard someone saying, one of the tzaddikim said, no one in Tzfat will be affected by anything that's going on here. That we're protected and we don't have anything to worry. And the person heard it from me, once I said it, said, oh, if he said that, then I'm okay. And that was the first reaction. And then the, the, the following reaction was, wait, so why did I just spend eight days worried, double locking my door, scared of everything, anticipating a, a siren? It was just like wasted time. So the second that you get the stamp from the tzaddik that nothing's going to happen, and you look back and you're like, wait, hold on, I just wasted so much time in fear. What could I have done? How much positivity could I have done? Right? So we shouldn't have to wait for a tzaddik to say something like that. We should ourselves be able to be on the level that we know that Hashem's taking care of us and Hashem's doing the ultimate good. And even if something is going to happen, that's the ultimate good because we're souls and we're not bodies. <coughs> but there's levels to this and there's uh, levels until it's all revealed to us. In order to strengthen this feeling, it's good to draw for yourself, imagine for yourself in your imagination, the truth. How everything in one second. This creation that you're scared of, this scary being, the Hamas, the Hezbollah, Iran, anything else, in one second, it could be completely nullified and disappear from this world. Right? And then, after a while, then it's being be renewed again. And you imagine in your mind that it disappears and then it comes back. It disappears and comes back. It can just go. It can be, like how many nations have come against Am Yisrael and they no longer exist and we're still here. Right? Where are they? Where are the Greeks? Where are the Romans? Where are the Babylonians? Where are these people? Right? Drill this truth into you more and more and more and understand that Hashem, He has all of the power. He's the true power. He's the true vitality in the life of this world. And He's the only true reality. There's nothing besides Hashem at all. And you should contemplate on the name of Havaya, Yudke Vavke, and feel and understand how that name just shows us Haya Hove Ve'yeh. He was, he is, and he will be. It's the infinite God. That there is no one before him, there's no one after him. He's the one that there is no two to. Right? He's the beginning that there is no end. Hashem, just understand, contemplate on that name in your head, Yud Kevavke, and understand how the whole entire reality is emanating from Hashem and everything comes down only by way of him. And remember, in every single movement in this world, every little finger that's moved in this world, there you can find the master of the world. A person will not cut their finger or get hurt on their finger down here if it wasn't decreed up there. Nothing in this world happens without Hashem deciding. The more you contemplate this, to talk about this, to pray, to merit to this, so too, the more you speak, think, and pray about this, and act on it, the more you're going to have a strengthening of the emunah inside of you, and you're not going to have fear. You're not going to be afraid of everything. Because everything is dependent on how clear your emunah is. And the more a person merits to recognize and to feel tangibly the reality of Hashem clearly, and to see how Hashem's light is inside everything that we experience in this world, and that everything that's done in this world is only done by way of the Holy Shekhinah, then all of the powers that are scary, the being that are scary, they just start to become like puppets. They look like dolls. They're funny, they're, you can laugh at them, you can play with them. They're nothing real. It's just a doll. It's just an action figure. It has no vitality, it has no soul itself. And it's better to contemplate on all of the, if you want to really take this to the next level, contemplate all of the, the miracles that were in the exodus of Egypt. Yetziat Mitzrayim. And again, we, when we read Shema every day, we have to remember to ourselves, we have to remind ourselves of the exodus of Egypt, leaving Egypt. Why? To remember that Hashem is the one that rules the world. Hashem is the one that put us in Egypt, and Hashem is the one that took us out of Egypt. And how did He do it? Well, totum of theme. Right, with great big wonders and, and signs to the whole entire world, but specifically to the Egyptians, 
You're messing with the wrong God, you're messing with the wrong people. Again, I always like to say, if that's how it was in the first Geula, the first redemption, there was one nation that was oppressing us, how much more so is it going to be when we have the whole entire world against us? And they all need to learn the same lesson. Right? Then it was for Egypt and for Pharaoh. The next Geula that's going to happen is going to be for the whole entire world, 2,000 years of, of, being, of being underneath their rule. How much larger is the lesson going to be? Right? So contemplate on Yetiat Mitzvah and contemplate on the exodus of Egypt and the rest of the miracles that have happened to Amisel over the years. And by way of this, you're going to see the greatness and the strength of Hashem's outstretched arm. All these nations, they're nothing. They're really nothing in comparison to Hashem's greatness. Like it's written in the Torah, Leman te saper ba'ozne b'incha uven b'incha et asher yitalalti b'mitzrayim et ototai asher samti b'am. Why did Hashem do all of this? So that you can tell to the ears of your children, right, your son, and your son's son, three generations, Let, make sure that they know. And everything italalti in, in modern Hebrew, litolel is to, to abuse, to, to bully, right, to like, to take advantage of a person in a, in, a, in a physical, bad way. Hashem says this about himself, what he did to Mitzrayim. And Hashem was mitalel, Hashem was like literally bullying them, abusing them, giving it to them. Tell your children how Hashem destroyed Mitzrayim, how he completely took them apart. And all of the, all of the miracles that he put there in that land. All of the things that Hashem did. Tell your children, your children, your children. This is the mitzvah of Pesach. This is the main mitzvah of Pesach. The Haggadah. That's why we read the Haggadah. What is Haggadah? It comes from the word. Le'agid. To give over. To tell over the story. Hashem, like He did then miracles, for us too He's going to do miracles. Hashem will not abandon us. Hashem will never leave us. We have to arouse the mercy of Hashem up in heaven, down here on earth, and reveal it. And to pray that we merit to sanctify Hashem's name. And we'll see with our own eyes. Like in the days that you left Egypt, right? I will show you wonders. Just like it was then, we're praying that we want to see with our own eyes. Please, Hashem, show us the Geulah. Show us what you did back then for us, now. Do it again. So, there's tests in this. There's nisyonot. And this is what David HaMelech already said. Yoshev b'shamay mishak, Adonai lag lamo. Hashem sits in, in heaven and he's laughing. So to say, Hashem is like, he's laughing. He's like, it's not, you know, what... What are you scared of? It's just, it's just a test. It's just a show. Like, what are you... He's laughing. He's like, it's not like laughing like, ah, I got you. It's like, come on. Like, come on. What are you doing? Like, what, what, is, what is this fear? We have to know and we have to remember clearly. All of their plans are nothing. It's, there's nothing to it. He's the balabayit ayichid. He's the only master of the house. Hashem's laughing at them. Hashem's making fun of them, all these enemies. Like the Pasuk says, not only will Hashem overcome them and beat them, Hashem, not only does he, does he beat the enemies, not only will he overcome the enemies, he's laughing at them. He's making a mockery out of them. There's one big laughter here. There's one big joke. Uh, one of my teachers, Rav Joey Rosenfeld, always says, What's the biggest joke in the world? Tzimtzum. The biggest joke in the world is that Hashem constricted Himself and created a world that He's not in. The fact that Hashem is not here, and that's how it's explained in Kabbalah, Hashem made a Tzimtzum, Hashem constricted His light in order to create a world. That's the biggest joke, meaning this world is the biggest joke. The fact that the world is called Olam, Ne'elam, Hashem is concealed, so to say, that's already the biggest joke. The rest of it is even more of a joke, right? 
Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, they think that they have power, they think that they have the, the ability. And again, we're using them because that's the situation we're in right now. But in our own individual lives, when it's a time of peace, and you see your neighbor that comes to fight with you, you see another person that comes to make a problem with you, and now you're afraid of him, what's he going to do? Maybe he can do this, he can, you know, he can he make a claim against me, he can make a report against me, or he can, you know, he, can, he could steal something from me, he could close my bank account, the bank can close my accounts, the, the electric company is going to shut off my power. Anything that you're scared of, it's the same thing. Hashem's just laughing at that. They plan all, and, and they're talking about and investing their time in all of these evil plans as if they have the decision, as if they can make a choice in this world. As if the power is in their hand. As if nothing will stop them in their ways. Nothing will happen. They have their plan, their evil plan, they're going to go out with it, nothing will stop them. It's very hard to say this after what happened last week, but we have to know that Hashem also decreed that. Everything is just a joke. Everything is just, a, it's nonsense. They have no power by themselves at all without Hashem. They don't even exist by themselves without Hashem. Everything is just an imagination. Everything is just an optical illusion. All of the power is only of the Creator, blessed be He. All of creation are just like puppets, like dolls in the hand of Hashem. That is the joke here. When can you make a joke? When can you laugh at someone? When can you make a mockery? When everything is nonsense, when it's not serious. Everything is the complete opposite. When you, to, when you can win a war and you can overcome your enemies, that's amazing. That's wonderful. But you still can't laugh at those who are, lo- are losing in the war. Right? You're not meant to laugh at your enemy. You're not meant to make a mockery out of your enemy when you're in a war. The, the, the laugh is when everything is just nonsense. There's nothing real here. They make their, they plan their, 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 their plans. They make their strategies. They try to sew it all together. They talk and they talk and they talk. And nothing will happen. Why? Because Hashem is with us. Then when your yetzara comes to scare you, right? And he shows you, he shows you proof that you should be scared. Then you have to return a, a stormy, stormy uh, war back to the Yetzirah who's trying to make you afraid. Again, part of terror is the word that's called terror. It's from the term fear, right? Part of terrorism is to make a person scared. Is to add different things that are not necessarily even real imminent threats. They're just coming to scare you. Like we had here in Tzfat, well, our first azaka that we heard in this round, right? The first red sirens that we had here, it was it was either a cyber attack or a mistake. Meaning, for nearly an hour and a half, people were in shelters, scared for their life, with reports that there's a hundred paragliders and and drones coming in from Lebanon, and not even one piece of information was true. Not even one. It was either a human mistake when it comes to the to our sirens. Or it was a cyber attack. But there was no paragliders, there was no drones, there was no reason for the red alarm to go off. 90 minutes, you had people scared in Sfat, and not anything was true. Why? Because that's part of terror, is that you just, it comes with fear. It comes with this anticipation for negative things. But it wasn't even, it wasn't even the case, right? So we have to remember this, we have to know that when the Yetzara is coming to get you, you have to return a fight to it and to drill back inside yourself and to repeat again and again and again the complete truth that everything is just in the hands of Hashem and Hashem does everything for the good. Like the rabbi said, Like the rabbis taught us, a person will not get a cut on their finger down here unless it was decreed up there. 
Just keep drinking your tea. There you go. Achayim v'amavet hem ach v'rak b'yad Hashem itbarach. Life and death is only in the hands of Hashem. Kmo shakatu v'asher b'yado nefesh kol chay v'ruach kol basar ish. Asher b'yado nefesh kol chay. It's in his hand, the soul of everything that's living. V'ruach kol basar ish. And, the, and the, spiritual, the spirit that's in the flesh of every single man. It's all in Hashem's hands. If the Yetzirah says, Weren't they a little bit successful? God forbid, they killed the 1300 of us. They were a little bit successful. It sounds like not a lot, but it, it is a lot, right? But let's say in the, in the grand scheme of how much we are, although every single Neshama is very, very precious for us, 1300 people is not like the Shoah, 6 million. And even the Shoah... They're a little bit successful. They, they, they did a little bit of their plan. Tanelo, answer him, If the wicked people were able to do anything, that's only because that's what Hashem wanted. That's what Hashem, for whatever reason, we don't understand Him. That's what He decreed. By way of allowing them a little bit of success, he lets the wicked people think that they make decisions. Think that they're being successful in making any kind of decision. Hashem wants them to puff their chest out, to feel pride. Specifically by way of them pumping out their chest and having more pride in the little bit of success that they had, then the pasuk will come true. On them, which is the shamedama de ad, that they will be destroyed, obliterated from this world until the end all be all of their existence. Amen. Can you May they be completely wiped out and annihilated. They don't have any real power to do damage. Everything is divine providence, everything is decided up above. Everything is going according to the godly plan. Again, which we don't understand, we're not God. Right? We don't understand exactly what he has going. The klipa, the evil forces of this world, are given the power to cover up the reality of Hashem, that Hashem is the one that's doing everything, as if they have the power. It's just a test for us. Do we get scared of everything that we see? Or do we chase after the lust that we see with our eyes? Or do we know that Hashem is the only true good? Hashem is the only true decision maker. Hashem is the only one that's making anything happen. And in the end, In the end, the enemies, the evil forces, they're going to fall into the pit that they made for other people. They're digging their own grave, as we say in English. For Am Yisrael, it's going to be good. It's always going to be good in the end. But dafka mitoch ma shenira sakana. Specifically, from what seems as the danger, that's where the good's going to come out of. Like again, Shoah was a horrible thing. The Holocaust was a horrible thing. Six million of our brothers and sisters were killed, slaughtered. Right? And what happened after it was finished? We came home. Whoever wants can now be home. Right? And that's not a small thing. After 2,000 years of not being here, that's not a small thing. That's a huge outcome of a very, very disgusting, horrible thing that happened. But Hashem runs the world, and only after that thing happening are we all able to sit here now. You have to repeat to yourself, You have to repeat to yourself, it cannot be that one person could hurt another. Everything is just by way of the decisions of Hashem. Barach. And Hashem, blessed be He, He is the real power behind everything. And you have to go deeper into this contemplation until your emunah is living living in your heart, it's alive. You feel your emunah pumping through your blood. And you're not going to be afraid of anything. And by way of breaking this klipa speedily, we will spirit, speedily merit to see the pasu come into our existence. Right? The whole entire world will be filled up with godly consciousness, just like the water fills the ocean, covers the ocean. Right? Just like water is in the ocean, so too the world will be filled with godly consciousness. And Hashem, Yud Kevavke, this name of mercy that was, is, and will be, the God that rules the whole entire world and makes everything happen. On that day, meaning the day that we're all waiting for, His name and He will be one. 
meaning what he actually is at his core and how it's expressed in this world, are all one, right? They're not gonna, it's not gonna be this, there's not gonna be this detachment. There's not gonna be this, what we know in our head that Hashem is merciful and he runs the whole entire world. But on the other hand, I experience this world. On that day, it's all gonna be one. His expression and his core, his essence are gonna be one. Is that Hashem? So, so why is it that people that have emunah, they're still scared? People that have emunah and they know who Hashem is, they know that everything's for the good, and we come to pray three times a day. We come to pray, all right? Mixed. Exactly. There's levels, right? But how could it be? How could it be that, that, there's this, uh, that there's this distraction? How could it be that there's this disconnect between the fact that I believe in a Kadosh Baruch Hu, but I still get scared? The, the midah of pachat, this trait of fear, it's rooted in gvura. It's rooted in the ten sefirot, one of the sefirah, which is called gvura, which is called might, right? And when it comes down into the klipa, when gvura falls, and it's coming down into the, to the, to this world, and it's covered up in this world, and not revealed in a nice, pure way, then a person thinks that he has some kind of reality. A person understand, doesn't understand how how true the light is, that it's a good light. And a person thinks that he has his own kind of reality and he has gvura to himself. I'm mighty, I'm someone, I'm a human being. What is gvura? Just to remind us, what is gvura? It was all the holidays of Tishrei, we discussed this, but what is gvura? The idea of gvura is the koach atimtum, is the ability to constrict, which is the root of all of the creation and all of the existence of all creations. The fact that Hashem constricted His light and made room for creations. But, when it's in a holy way, then it's my existence with nullification to Hashem. I exist, but I know I'm just a tool for Hashem, completely. And the work there is to conquer your Yetzirah and to reveal godliness. Constrict the Yetzirah, reveal godliness. And to establish the creation just as a tool for godly revelation. Right? And I'm only here in order to reveal godliness. But in the Klippa, when it's Gvura comes down to a negative side and it's revealed on the other side, then what is it? It's, it's this feeling of I exist, I have power, I'm a human being that is important. I need to do this. I need to do that. It's like the opposite. In a holy way, gvura means that you realize that the yetzara is nothing and your whole entire job in this world is to reveal godliness. In the unholy way is that you feel that you're everything and you're important and then you have to do. So that's gvura. That's where fear is rooted. It's because you think that you are some reality to yourself then you think that the other one, the other person also has power. He's also someone to himself. And then you have fear. Then there's this ability to have fear. That maybe the reality of the other person will overcome the reality of me. Maybe he's more important. Maybe he's more powerful than I am. Because you already think that you're something, so then he's something as well, and maybe he's just stronger than me. Then, therefore, there's people that have a very hard time not having anxiety and not having fear. Even though they know Hashem Barach is the one that's giving life force and vitality and existence to everything, and there's no power without Hashem, and they know that the Gvura is Hashem's and the power is Hashem's, and they know how weak people are. And what's the reason? Because they want to live in Muna only on the other side, meaning to feel that the, the other person is, is the other person uh, makes me scared. Sorry, the other person who, who, who makes me scared, he has no existence, right? They want to live in Muna about the other person. Meaning you, you have no reality, it's all in the hand of Hashem, it's all HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you can't do anything to me. But they don't remember to think that about themselves as well. If you think that the enemy is nothing, you have to think about yourself also as nothing. If you think your neighbor can't do anything bad to you because Hashem runs the world, then who are you to do anything in this world? If it's not true about him and not about you. You have to think this about yourself as well. And because of that, people with emunah don't have so much success in this. Always. 
כי צריך לחיות אמונה עד הסוף בכל העניינים. You have to live this out completely. If Hashem runs the world and your friend can't hurt you because Hashem runs the world, so then Hashem runs the world and you can't do anything because Hashem runs the world as well. Therefore, anytime you feel fear and you want to go into the thoughts of to think about the other person that's making you scared, that he has no power and he has no reality by himself, first things first, think about yourself like that. And when you remember that you don't have your own reality, you don't have your own life, just everything is just the reality of Hashem, your life force is from Hashem too, then easily, easily, you'll be able to feel that no one could ever take anything from you. No one could ever affect you. Because you also don't exist. You're also just an extension of Hashem's light. And there's another nikuda here, there's another point here. And that's uh, this level to feel that the whole entire world, nature itself, and all of the people in the world is a, nat- is a level that is completely nullified. They're just all klipot. It's all just an illusion. It's all a big matrix. And, to, and you need to reveal from within that the true godliness. Meaning, there's a level of seeing my, my enemy or my opposer, he doesn't have any reality to himself. And then there's a level where I see I don't have any reality to myself. And then there's a level that this whole entire world doesn't have any reality to itself. As long as a person is connected to this world, he likes to eat a lot, he likes to sleep a lot, he wants to party, he wants to be involved in this world all the time, it's very, 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 very hard to get to this level, to really live on a level that the whole world doesn't exist. Because you're involved in the world, you're connected to the world. And all the different things, when it comes to your opinions, right? When it comes to your actions, when it comes to your thoughts, when it comes to your speech, the more that you're connected to this world, the more you give energy and power to this world, the less you're going to be able to realize that this world doesn't really exist. Then in order to connect to Hashem and to live bitachon, to live out bitachon, you have to increase your yirat shamayim. You have to increase how much you see Hashem in everything. And to completely disconnect from the vanity and the sheker of this world and the klipot. Meaning all the things of lusts, Anything that you lust after, anything that you feel like you need, you want to connect to that you don't really need, it's not really that holy. Even if it's permitted, even if you're, you're allowed to eat meat, the question is how much meat do you eat? Every time you feel a little bit of raw in your body, you want to go eat a burger now? Right? Anytime you, you, you have a little bit of weakness, you want to go sleep now for a few hours, when you already slept at night, six, seven hours? Right? How much do you, do you really believe that you need this, that, and the other, you have to go to the doctor for every little thing that you're going through? You never pray for your own health? The answer is always a pill? How much are you in this world versus how much are you living the godly reality? Everyone according to what they're going through. Everyone needs to do their own contemplation and realize where they could add more yacha maim and where they could disconnect from this world more. And the things that are forbidden, for sure, for sure, if you're holding there, then we're not even talking, right? Whatever is forbidden is forbidden. The Torah said it outright. You're not allowed to engage with it. And then there's the things that you're allowed to do. But the question is, how much do you do them? The more that you're able to disconnect yourself from the klipa, from this world, from the things that cover up the godly reality, so too will be the level that you can live out your emuna. And again, bitachon is an outcome of emuna, Right? Emunah is, I believe, that, uh, I believe that Hashem's taking care of me and everything's good. Bitachon is already, not that I believe. My emuna is so strong that I know Hashem, I trust Hashem when all the lights are turned off, when everything seems chaotic and everything's horrible, I know that Hashem is doing the right thing and I have full trust in Him. To get to that level, you have to disconnect more and more from this world because this world is the opposite of that knowledge. This world is the opposite of that belief. If for sure, if there's a time of danger, time of war, first things first, you have to check yourself. We have to check ourselves and see, where am I lacking? Not because you should be afraid. Why do you have to check yourself? In order to get out of the klipa, where am I wrong? Where am I focusing too much on this world and not enough on godliness? Where could I be better? 
כי אם יש לו פחד מהם, סימן שהוא עדיין קשור עמהם מעט. If you're afraid of this world, it's because you're too attached to this world. If you put too much power in this world and that causes you fear, that means that you, can, you need to start disconnecting from this world a little bit more and coming back to the true reality. And everybody needs to do this bedek bayit. Everyone needs to check their own house. Check yourself, check your house, check everything about you. Actually, right, to really go in and to do this work. And you have to return in your heart. Return your heart. It's not enough to act kosher, to put on tefillin, to put on tefillin and to pray three times a day and to do all the, to check the physical V's of Judaism. It's not enough. Your heart needs to be aligned with Hashem as well. And to disconnect from anything that Hashem hates. And everybody, you know your soul. You know exactly where you need to be. You know, you know what you need to be working on. And when you disconnect from the klipa, then your heart will be able to have full trust in Hashem. Like a baby on its mother's arms, nursing from his mother. You're not going to be having anxiety and worry about your life. And not about your food, and not about your money, and not where you're going to get paid from. You're not going to worry about any of these things. Hashem completely destroyed Egypt, gave it to them, by himself, went on a huge war against the, the most powerful nation in the whole entire world. And then right after that, he brought us food and sustenance from the heaven. We've already been through this as a nation, where Hashem completely annihilated our enemies and provided us in a place where it made no sense, where there was no way to make money, there was no way to grow food. There was no way to do anything for our sustenance. Hashem took care of us. He brought us man. Hashem took liquids, meaning water, out of a rock. He did infinite amounts of miracles for us. And by way of this, He showed us that nothing could affect Him. Nothing is stronger than Hashem. So then why are we worried? What do we have anxiety about? The Shabbat who runs the world, he's already shown us multiple times that he's going to destroy our enemies and he's going to take care of us in the ways that we never would have imagined to come. And like he said earlier, dafka from the thing that seemed dangerous to you is where your salvation is going to come from. Right? Like we say, me'ayin yavo izri. From where is my salvation going to come from? Dafka mi'ayin. From nothing. When you make yourself nothing, when you put this world as nothing, that's where your salvation is going to come from. From what, from what was the danger? That you, that your ani is in danger. Your I is in danger. Switch the I to ain. Switch the ani. Switch the I to nothing. Switch the, the ani to ain. That's where your salvation is going to come from. When you nullify yourself, when you nullify this whole entire world, and you realize you're not that important without Hashem. So what's the danger here? If you're just another extension of Hashem and this is what Hashem is trying to do. What's the danger? So now we have left with the last part. The last part is ishtadlut. What is our effort? Right? Do I get a gun? Do I move? Do I leave the country? Do I go to another place for my safety? What's our ishtadlut? Another part of bitochon is ishtadlut. Liftoach b'ashem itbarach shimtza lo etzarachav. To have trust in Hashem that He shall give you everything that you need. Shechalitzeu mitzarotav. That Hashem will save you and bring you out of your hardships. On the other side, a person is commanded to put in effort and to try. The Chavot HaLevavot speaks about this. The duties of the heart speaks about this. The Mesilat Yesharim speaks about this. The path of the just, the Ramachal. For sure, your effort does no benefit. It's a hard thing to hear. You putting in effort does nothing. Whether you put in your effort or not, it doesn't matter. Whatever is going to be is what Hashem decided to be. But you're commanded to put in a little bit of effort. What's the reason that Hashem created a world in a way that there is a cover up of the truth? Hashem wants to conceal the truth. And that's so that there will be a test. So whoever wants and wants to make the mistake, as if the world and nature, they have their own power, you can go ahead, you can make that mistake. And Hashem wants this world to act this way. That we shouldn't, we shouldn't remove the cover-up of this world. Until 
until the time comes that Hashem is completely revealed. Therefore, we're commanded to, do, uh, to make effort and to try so that we show that as if there is this nature. Because this is the world that He wants. Because I did what I did, so I was successful. A Jew needs to remember the truth. The actions of what you're doing in this world, they don't make any change on the outcome. It's just a pipeline to bring down the light that Hashem is trying to bring down into the world. The godly power is the only thing that's actually acting. But Hashem wanted it to be covered up and to be in garment, put inside a garment within the actions of man. But for sure, with, even without the actions of man, the thing would have happened. Because that is what the king decreed. Hashem wants us to come to the world. You can sit and not do anything all day, it's still going to come to the world. Or you can go and you put all the effort and it's still not going to happen. Whatever Hashem decrees. For example, a person who has a, a, a dangerous uh, wound. He needs to know that his healing is dependent only on Hashem. You have a wound, you have an infection, you have whatever it is. Who's going to heal you? Hashem. But Hashem commanded you to prepare a way for you to, right, to, the, 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 a vessel for the light to come down. And then, therefore, you have to put cream over the wound, right? Hashem wants there to be healing, but Hashem created a world that has to be by way of actions. So Hashem tells you to put cream on your arm. Is the cream healing you, or is it Hashem healing you? Let's be real. We know, right? And you have to remember that the cream itself, it's nothing. It doesn't really heal you, and it doesn't have any power by itself. Hashem... Hashem's the one that put godly light inside that cream. And it's the Hashem that's healing your wound. Because Hashem Barach wants that there should be a concealment. And it, as if the, the cream itself is what's doing the healing. And the, the, the wisdom here is to remember to put on the cream and to remember in your whole entire heart, to remember and to say it with your mouth as well, The one who's healing me is Hashem. And this cream is just the shaliach it's just a vessel, it's just a messenger, and it's covering up his light. But I need to remember what's really going on here. So now a lot of people have a question, how much Ishtadlut do I really have to do? What's the proper measure of Ishtadlut? On this question of how much to do, we can't really answer, because everything depends on a lot of different, a lot of different uh, pratim, a lot of different finer details. The truth on this question is, it's not an essential question. It's, it's a... It's a nikudatit, it's mikomit. It's like, in this case, how much do I have to do? In this case, you have to ask this question a whole bunch of times. It's not like a general one-time answer for your whole entire life. And not only that, that whoever stands things and he puts the, the main thing is his bitachon, whoever's asking this question too much, right, mm -hmm. it depends on your level of bitachon. You, it shows that if, I, if you're asking the question of how much Yishtadlut I have to do, it's showing that you still haven't gotten to the bottom of what Bitochon is and trusting in Hashem. If you're really asking how much do I have to do, that, sh that shows that you still think that your effort has an outcome in this world. That, you really met, like, that how much you do really is going to make an, eff an effect in the world. You have this feeling. If I were only to put in the effort, then for sure I would have had salvation. Since you have Yirat Shamayim, you ask if what is the what is the proper level of Ishtadlut according to my Bitachon. But the truth is, there is no connection at all between how much effort you put in and the reality that is coming down. And all of these shadud that you're going to do will not help at all by way of itself because only Hashem is the true doer. But we have halakha. We have rules that we have to follow. That we have to do ishtadlut. Then what is the question here? Ha'im ma'aseh ploni nikhlal ba'alakha hazo or no? If this action that I'm going to do, is that included within the halakha of ishtadlut or not? Mezo she'ilat zdadid. This is a side question. Hanogat la'anaga befal. How do I act? You know, how am I meant to act? It's not really a question of bitachon or ishtadlu. That's what is included within the halakha. 
אבל היא אינה נוגעת כלל בעצם הפתרון של עניין. It has nothing to do with the actual solution. You have to know how you have to act. But don't think that your actions are actually going to be the solution. כי הבוטח האמיתי יודע שאין לאף אחד כוח. A person who has true, full trust in Hashem, he knows that no one has power in this world to change the reality. אלא הכל רק ביד השם יתברך, everything is just in the hands of Hashem. ממילא כשהוא חושב, והאם לעשות השתדלות, so when you come to think, do I have to do any effort, do I have to do something? הוא לא מעלה בליבו מחשבה שהשתדלות תשנה משהו. He doesn't bring into his heart, is my effort actually going to change something? הוא בכלל לא חושב שהבעיה תיפתר אם הוא יעשה השתדלות. You don't even think that if you do something, the problem is going to be removed. It's going to be solved. The only question that he has is, is am I commanded to do this or not? Right? According to Allah, do I have to go get a gun in a situation like this if I could get a gun? I'm, I'm thinking Allah. Allah. Does me having a gun going to stop anything? We just saw hundreds of soldiers get slaughtered and they were all armed. Did the gun help them? Right? So when you go to ask the question, do I need to get a gun or not? Not because you think if you have a gun, you're going to be safe now. The question is, halakhically, should I be a person that is armed right now or not? I'm trying to follow halakha. What should I do in this situation? What am I commanded to do? Not that the gun is actually going to save me from all... Is your pistol going to save you from an AK-47? Possibly. But is it for sure going to do it? Most likely, no. If it has to come down to it, yeah, it's, not the, it's not the right thing. But no ba'u dvarim, elu la'amit et ishtadluto. We're not trying to lower the amount of effort you put right now, right? Us saying that your ishtadlut does nothing, the Chachamim saying this, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have to put in the effort. That's a whole different thing. It's just coming to strengthen and sharpen the idea. We have to separate the idea that you're commanded to do effort, which is a proper thing, to the feeling and the, and the emotion that a person has that when he does this ishtadlut and when he puts in this effort, בוודאי, for sure, when I do the ishtadlut, right, then for sure I'm going to be solved. I'm going to, be, I'm going to bring salvation. And this is not a kosher feeling. So just again, we have to have trust in Hashem. Our lack of trust in Hashem comes from Gvura. We think that we're something special. We think that we exist by ourselves. So therefore we think that the other person exists by himself. But the fear comes when I, if I exist and he exists, maybe he's stronger than me. And maybe he's going to take out my existence. We have to remember everything is in the hand of the Shem, and we're commanded to put in effort to save ourselves and to do the right thing. But that is just an halacha that we have to do because Hashem created a world of astara. Hashem created a world of concealment. Don't think for one second that because you did this or you didn't do that, that that's actually going to solve the problem. Hashem, whatever He decrees is what's going to be. You were commanded though in a world of halacha, in a world of physicality, to do actions. And Hashem wants by way of your actions that He should be revealed. So don't think for a second that your action is actually what's going to save you. It's just because you're commanded in a world to do actions. Bizat Hashem, may this help everybody, and may we be blessed to get out of our situation and to come into the true life of emunah and truth. Bizat Hashem, Amen. Thank you.